<clears throat> we're going to see if this 10 year old hunter specialty fresh earth scent still has the funk to it. Let's do it. Matt what, has. What do I do here? You pop it open. Ah. Uh. This segment of DOD TV is brought to you by Ram Trucks. Guts, glory, Ram. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Drury Outdoors 100% Wild Podcast, episode number 161. And as promised, it's the special scratch and sniff edition. Oh, can't wait. I almost forgot. <laughs> <laughs> How could you forget this? So not now, but later on. I brought my, I found this. I was cleaning out the garage. We're doing a major overhaul, some spring cleaning at the house. I found my old Hunter Specialties Fresh Earth cover scent wave. Does it still smell? We'll find out. Ah, you sniff first. This is probably, I don't know, 10 plus years old. Nice. Leave that right there. All right. I'm Tim Chelsvik. When I first saw it, I thought it was one of those coffee uh, cups. Oh, like a, like a K cup. cup. <laughs> I don't think you'd want to run hot water through those and then drink what comes out the other side. Now, that'd be a good podcast. <laughs> That's an eye opener. <laughs> you are Matt Drury. You are Tim Chelswick. And we have some special guests from GSM Outdoors. Uh, we want to talk about tree stands, what's new in the tree stand world, tree stand tech, blind tech, and you're really grooving right now. That's right, man. You know, we <laughs> got always this got new, the rhythm. Well, hey, we had that new intro, the new music. Today. I like it. Hey, hey, hey. It was. It's a track that it kind of reminded me of some of my younger days. Little hip hop track, <laughs> trying to keep it fresh for the young kids you, out there listening to the podcast. Yeah, you are. You are. You are fresh, sir. <laughs> I, I'm not normally a hip hop guy, but I actually like the new sound to the show. If Boom. if folks have some feedback for us, just let us know. Like, keep it to yourself. <laughs> if it's negative, I keep like it to yourself. Track. If it's positive, comment in the comment section there on Deercast when we post this. Now, episode. if you have negative feedback about our next two guests, please do send that to us. I want to forward all of that to we these can guys. Give them their, their emails and telephone numbers. Exactly. We've got Chris Duncan and we've got Keith Beam on the show. Welcome aboard, boys. The guys from GSM Outdoors. What's Welcome up? Welcome aboard. I'm going to go with Keith Duncan. I'll call him Chris Beam. Let's confuse the stuff out of these people. Well, <laughs> I about said a bad word. Did you see that? I about said a bad word. Hey, no, you edited yourself <laughs> as Yes, I happening. did. I, I want to know what he was that. thinking. <laughs> Keith, <laughs> it, was the it was more like a blurred speech. You know, I turned 55 yesterday you young guys thinking of the old times well happy belated birthday i'm sure you don't feel like a day over 50 <laughs> you know i was gonna sing you the the gender neutral happy birthday song so here it goes you're the birthday you're the birthday you're the birthday boy or girl that's it huh yeah you're, never you're not sure what's you're, you're not sure what gender I am? <laughs> I don't want to assume. You know, in this day and age, you can't assume those kind of things. I don't even know. It. We're going to have to edit all this out of the podcast. <laughs> no one's going to listen to this. What happened? Hey, Duncan, what sex are you? <laughs> no idea. There's, oh, like, like, there's like 56 of them. Going so. off the rails. Like I said, all the I'm negative feedback, send it to Tim's email address. <laughs> we'll forward it to Chris. And we'll forward it to Keith. Just remember, at the end of the show, we're smelling something. Okay. So that kind of covers all I'm of the now. But. <laughs> it's called failure. Uh, yes. <laughs> okay. So a lot is a lot is happening on in in the stand market. People are going lighter. They're going deeper in the woods. They want different kinds of. Uh, they're just hunting differently, and and especially with more people accessing public land, I think people are looking for different kinds of solutions. So. So these these are the guys to talk to. Yeah, and it's interesting because, you know, as, as Mark and Terry have evolved, they've gone kind of less. They started deeper into the timber and packing in the stands and having the heavy, you know, camera arms. They, yep. Heck, they innovated a lot of that technology with the camera arms back in the day. But now, you know, over the last decade, you've seen us kind of pulling back further and further out of the timber, unless it's a, you know, morning hunt in the rut and going to field edges and, uh, food pot strategies and box blinds We're bringing and, the deer to them yeah and it's 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 changed the game for us in a lot of ways and, and upped our success in a lot of ways but that's not always a feasible option for uh, your average guy and it's not always the most interesting to watch either i know we get a lot of comments about that so you know when 
I think when you look at the the kind of the whole marketplace and tree saddles and pack in climbers and all that stuff, you know, that's where the guys at GSM Outdoors, they have several products across different brands that kind of fit the needs here. So I'm looking forward to talking to these guys about it. Yeah. So, so big picture guys, what are you seeing in the market? What are hunting, what are hunters asking for right now that you're trying to meet the needs of? It's honestly a lot like what you guys just talked about. There's so many, so many uh, hunters out there with so many different styles and you kind of see ebbs and flows and in, in those styles throughout the years. Um, and right now we're seeing a lot of people who are doing what Mark and Terry do. We're seeing a lot of guys who, like you talked about, Tim, who are wanting to have the lightest weight possible set up that they can. And um, our goal as a manufacturer is to have products that suffice the needs of everyone. Um, because every single person has a different way they want to hunt these deer. And one week you might want to hunt them one day and then you know, I need to do a, you know, have a mobile set up and go in after a buck or you, know, you might be that public land hunter. So... Um, we are seeing a lot more people though, who are looking for that lightweight, extremely quiet, extremely mobile setup. And we've got some new products that we're going to launch actually still this year that are going to be pretty cool. That should fit those needs. So we could be breaking some news here. Yeah. So you guys, GSM, they, they own muddy, they own big game. They own Hawk. Is there any, is there anything else in that line consumer facing that you guys, you know, that somebody out there listening might be aware of? No, Hawk, muddy and big game would be the stands and blinds. Okay. We've got, we've got some ground blinds and in, in HME and in NAP as well. But uh, for the most part, those would be the three main ones. So what are you guys most excited about this year? Uh, what am I most excited Hunting about? First of all, the down and out blinds. Uh, it's a blind. It's actually a premium blind from Hawk that uh, is one of those portable permanent blinds you know you're going to be able to take this thing slide it out there set it up and then leave it for the whole season which is really really cool you know they're a, they're aluminum accordion panel thing they've got some really great fabric on it it's got a steel roof on doesn't have a hub it's not going to collapse like that they're super roomy and there's different styles to fit everybody's needs so me coming from the ground blind world uh, for 26 years now this is one of those additions that i think is going to go gangbusters you know, you guys were talking about, you know, the times are changing. We're actually getting deer to come to us, you know, with food plots and so on. You know, some people can't afford a two or $3,000 blind. Some people are hunting, you know, a little 20 acre spot that the farmer finally gave you, you know, and you're not going to run your, your muddy bull blind over there. That's where these down and out blinds come in. You can set them out there. You can leave them out there and you're going to have great success out of there. They got silent windows. I mean, it's just, it's a super cool unit. And we have, like I said, multiple, um, models of that. Now, Chris can tell you what's coming out in the tree stand world, and I'm sure uh, he's excited to spill the beans on this one. Before we jump to that, on those down and out blinds, so we, we checked them out at the ATA show, and they're super sturdy. So what I liked about it is, you know, you, you can construct your own blind, your own platform if you wanted to. Mm -hmm. You know, it can, it can go on the, the ground easily enough, but if you want, you can construct your own platform and you can put it up in the air. I mean, they make them as well, muddy and, and, and big game yeah. walk all they have, they make the platforms, but say you can't afford that, you know, build your own platform. Mm -hmm. You can put this thing up there and it's like, you have a full out box blind and they're roomy. They're well built. They're sturdy. I mean, it's, they're, they're really nice. It's, it's a game changer. I think in a lot of ways. What's the weight on something like that? Is it something you could put on your back and hike out to your spot or would you really want to put it in a side-by-side -side or a pickup truck? You you can do it. I mean, it, it's like a 60, 70 pound adventure. I mean, but it, it's not you super portable. It. It's not a hub style. Really strong, point. Matt. Take that back. But are you, are, are you strong enough, Matt? I mean, throw that I on. Am. Like, He's not. No, look. Okay. Jim's not. <laughs> nice. Oh, Hey, Hey, Tim's what, ready. What's the price? Uh, no, it, but you know, what's if you, you, you take it on your side-by-side, -side, um, you can carry it. It's got a shoulder strap, throw it over your shoulder. Just take your time, walk it out there. But I'm telling you, it, it is really neat. And then Matt was talking about elevating it. You know, a lot of times in a lot of places, the terrain only changes a foot or two. But when you're on the ground, there are times when you can't see that deer coming. You can't see that turkey. And, and you might only need to be two, three or four feet off the ground. Yeah. And that's the advantage to this. You know, a little bit of, of carpentry work, you know, we've got the platforms for it. You know, and we can build the whole stand, too. But being able to just get that up enough where you can see all through that timber all through that food plot where you can, you know, really have an idea of what's starting to venture out in there. 
what kind of price point are we talking from from the 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 smaller ones to the larger ones? Like, what's the range? I, they're going to be anywhere from five hundred to a thousand dollars, depending on the model. Yeah, so it's it's as close to as you can get to a, a full out box blind, mm-hmm. but yet it's portable, a, a lot more portable than a tradi- traditional box blind. Sure. So you know, it's a, it's kind of that step above your pop out blind, your mm-hmm. hub style. Yeah. Probably nice if if you've got a relatively new property, you're not 100 percent sure about the deer movement out there. You're not you're not committing to a spot for the entire season. If you need to move it, you can. Yeah. And, and what's really nice is like even as far and I know Keith talked about it. Um, they fold up completely flat. I mean, they're this this thick when you have them folded up, and they go in that carrying bag and they fit perfect in the back of a truck. The smallest version is the Scout, and it goes clear up. We go clear up to uh, Octagon, that is uh, our biggest version. But um, what I liked about them was, you, you, like, like Keith talked about, you don't have to worry about hubs breaking in the winter with snow and everything else or rods, but um, how easy they are to set up. I mean, they set up very quickly. Mm-hmm. When you look at them in person for the first time, if you never set it up, you're going, hmm. The thing is really solid. It's really sturdy. Um, it's probably kind of a pain in the ass to assemble, but it's like, it is easy. You can do it in five minutes or less. So that, that's one of my favorite features of it. it. It Like you keep saying, it's an accordion style. It, it literally yeah. just kind of folds out. It's it's pretty it plays easy. music when you yeah. fold yeah. it out. That's right. We also need 25 cents from Chris Duncan for cussing on the podcast. <laughs> This what did I say? Just, just so you know, he I'm not keeping so much, score. He didn't even realize it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. That's a trick. You're going to make me try to say it. I know your shenanigans. I apologize. We, we should say if people are familiar with Chris Duncan, it's probably because they've seen him on the Dream Season team. Actually, Dreamcast. probably not really seen much of him because he didn't kill me. <laughs> I had a horrible year. It was bad. He made some appearances. <laughs> luckily, yes. Luckily, he knows people that killed things, and he was kind of. There for the recovery. Chris, you and I are kind of in the same boat there, so don't feel too bad. <laughs> I, I think he still owes me a couple of hunts. <laughs> riding their, I was riding their coattails last year. Yeah. yeah. You know, w- one of the things I appreciate, and this is kind of, this is kind of an aside, but a, a blind bag that actually still fits the blind when you collapse it and try to get it back in. Yeah. <laughs> There's been so many times over the years. It's like when you get a tent, you try to stuff it back Might into well the pack. bag away. Yep. Yeah. It's like, this isn't going to fit. <laughs> I think I have a nail hammered into the garage. That's got a bunch of bags. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's they, a one way trip. Yeah. Yeah. Might as well just toss awesome. it. It's such a little thing, but man, it makes a difference when you know, you can stuff it back in there and maybe some of the accessories. Yeah. Well, and these bags now that these guys are making, I mean, they're back, the backpack, backpack, backpack straps bag. and yeah, stuff. It's nice. Yeah. So just just a little, that's something I I love is when the the, the pack still fits. Chris and I had talked about this. We just got done with our innovations meeting, and our our team is is very creative. And there's a lot of things that we can't discuss here that are going to be just superstar like products what? that blow people away. Even to this day, it's not just making a different flavored Ritz cracker. It's actually it's completely different. It's very innovative. You know, one of the things that, that Chris and I have talked about is that that bag problem with winter hunting or cold spring hunting. Like you know, I told you before, Chris came on. I was I was sending him you know screenshots of weather bugs showing it feels like 19, and I'm turkey hunting. And, you know, you fold your blind up and it's stiff and it doesn't fit in the bag. So we've talked about some some different things of a layout pad. You fold it up and roll it up and then cinch strap it so it'll fit on any blind once it is cold and it doesn't want to fit in that bag. Plus, it's quieter when you drop it out. So there's a lot of things that we're looking at. You know, there's a lot of things that are available there. You know, so there, but, but that's minimal compared to what we got coming out. So nice. A blind that smells like a Ritz cracker. (laughs) I want to sit Beautiful. in that blind. What what flavor? I don't know. Do they have other flavors? I mean, it's yeah, catch up, Tim. Ritz cracker. Jesus. I can't afford different flavors of Ritz. Get with the time. I just get the regular kinds. <laughs> get the rats. <laughs> I, I can't afford the Ritz. So I get the rats. <laughs> <laughs> They're partially chewed by the rodents at the factory. <laughs> okay, so before we started the show, you guys kind of tipped your hand that you've got a. Uh, that you've got a new product coming out that uh, that has not been talked about yet in media. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to turn this one over to Mr. Chris Duncan. Chris, you have the floor. 
So yeah, we, uh, you know, going into the tree stand side of things now, as we talked about earlier, there's a lot of people who are wanting to have the most mobile setups possible. And we've talked about doing this for, I mean, I even remember two or three years ago, we, we discussed bringing this product to market and, uh, we're finally to that point now. So we're going to be bringing, um, a, a new saddle to the market that will be available in September. And we'll also have two new platforms and that'll be smaller platforms, aluminum, lightweight platforms. And one of those platforms will actually um, mount to the top of our hot helium sticks. Hmm. And I know those are really popular amongst a lot of mobile hunters. So that'll be a pretty cool setup. Do well to have your saddle, everything you need for it. Um, lineman's belt, climbing rope. Um, and then obviously you could at the platform as well that would attach directly to our, our helium sticks. So it'll be a pretty cool mobile setup. So let's, let's talk for a minute about what saddle hunting is, is all about because it's, it's, it's coming into the zeitgeist of the hunting community, but I think there's still a lot of questions and people maybe haven't heard it at all about it. So, so talk about the, the process and what it's like to be up there. So instead of having to carry a, you know, a, even a lightweight tree stand that weighs nine, 10 pounds, you're essentially just carrying a saddle. I don't know how the best way to explain it. Maybe a harness without the straps across your shoulders and your chest. Um, but you've got your saddle, you've got, um, so that's super lightweight. And ours is going to have a couple different variations and a couple features that you can change based off of um, your preferences, which if you go to our website, I'm going to have those loaded up in the uh, very near future. Probably by the time this launches, I'll have those on the website. So you'll be able to check out the products and the different uh, options you have with them. But essentially, um, you're, when you get up in that tree, you're, you're facing the tree and you've got that saddle around your waist. You got your, your waist strap, your buckles. It's just super lightweight. It's just a completely different style of hunting. It's hard for me to explain. Um, I wish there, you know, I had a video or whatever that I could help explain. It's hard for me, I guess, to explain it. If uh, you guys okay. have one, we can B-roll this podcast. Hey, hey, with I guess, I guess when you think about it, it picture a lineman up there. Okay. Very you see him with the spikes. He runs up, he's got this harness around him. He's sliding up the tree. So we built this, um, the saddle is, it, it, it seems different, but it's like a, a webbed and reinforced, really tough thing that you put your legs through and it all around your waist, just like Chris said, and it's going to attach to the tree above. So you're locked in, you're super safe. I mean, the, the blind men have been showing this for years. And then we add safe lines and stuff like that that Chris can touch base on and, and everything I've seen. But it's fully adjusted. It's got back support and everything you need to be able to move off of that little platform there and, and work around the tree so you can really cover 360 degrees. I think one of the top features of this thing or one of the greatest advantages of this is the guys that run in and hunt public ground and then have to haul everything back out. Wouldn't you agree, Chris? Yes. It, it, it's very, kind of, very a, I was going to say, it's kind of a minimal footprint <clears throat> and, you know, like you said, it's lightweight. Um, how big is that platform? That's the part that I always am curious about because the, there is a small platform for your feet, right? Yeah. So the, the, we'll have two different platform options. I don't know the dimensions off the top of my head. I don't want to say something that's wrong, but um, I'd have to look those up. But the, the one that attaches to the stick to our helium stick is the smaller one. And then you can also buy a, a different version if you want a little bit of a bigger platform. Roughly, I mean, give me a, you know, a rough estimate here. I can look it up quick. Um, but on, on the uh, the one that's going to attach to the helium stick, you're looking at about like this. Gotcha. Like that and that. Okay. It, it's really a place to get leverage on the tree. It, it seems like as a, you, know, you have to kind of reconceptualize a tree stand. It's not a place you're going to stand and and shift around on a whole lot. It's, it's more of just kind of a place to get some leverage, take some pressure off the saddle. Right. Yes. And they're actually really comfortable. Like that's one thing when I, when I first started um, seeing these products and hearing about saddles and people saddle hunting, I guess I initially I was like, man, I just, I don't know if I could sit that long and do that. It just didn't mm -hmm. seem like it'd be as comfortable. And then once we've been testing them and, and practicing with them, I'm like, this is actually a really comfortable way to hunt. It's a lot more comfortable than I thought it. 
So like a rut hunt, you could sit in this thing all day. Yeah. You kind of just recline, relax, chill out. And if you're like me, you won't kill anything, but <laughs> <laughs> so that's the world. Maybe that's by. the reason to have a saddle. <laughs> so you can relax. <laughs> But but in, in a saddle setup, you still need a way to get up the tree, right? Yes. So you still you still should use the same safety practices as before, as you know, using your your climbing belt to to go up that tree. It's, you need to be tied in at all times. I mean, it's honestly not as uh, it's not it's not that complicated, uh, regardless if you're using you know whatever steps you're using, whatever whatever you're using to get from the ground to where at whatever height you're going to hunt, you know, just got to stay tied in the whole time. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the other really cool thing about the saddle, the saddle hunting that I like is, and I think you mentioned this, Chris, is that you can kind of sidestep your way around the tree. And so there's no more, well, the deer came in from behind me. I didn't have a shot. Like if you, as long as you don't get caught moving, you can reposition yourself around that tree. So is the, are you putting more than the one small platform up there? You know, like how do you get on the other side of the tree? No, it, it, or just leaning, leaning around. Really. Yeah, it, it, it's just like Chris said, you're, you're leaning around. If you think about it, Matt, if you just switch feet or whatever, you know, just sw switching a foot for your, your dominant foot, you can shoot like 180 off of that side, turn your body around, put the other foot down there, come around the tree the other way. And you, you pretty well have 360 degrees. And the neat thing is, is just like Tim said is, you know, that buck comes behind you, you're going to be able to kill it. And buck comes on the other side of the tree, you're going to be able to kill it. The, the super cool thing about this is it really is a comfortable way of giving great mobility around a tree. And at the same time, keeping your profile. And I've learned this, you know, working with Chris, you know, I've, I've always been a ground blind hunter, but I get to use tree stands now. So it's kind of excited, but you, you don't want to be sticking out away from that tree very far. And you guys know this more than anybody. You kind of want to keep your profile pressed up against that tree. Now you don't have a platform, you know, if a bucket's sitting there checking you out, you're leaned into that tree. Do you, would, would, when you hunt this style, does it help to have a bow that's a shorter axle to axle? Like, I don't know. I just, I'm just thinking through the logistics of this thing and even like you're saying, okay, you switch the dominant way to your foot, you know, but it's the maneuverability of it. I, I don't know. I know there's tons of guys that are, obviously this is like a real, this is the cool new style. You sound so old right now. I, I, it's cool. I'm <laughs> fine. I'll, I'll own it, but I don't get it necessarily. Um, and I've hunted plenty of platform, you know, plenty of tree stands yeah. in my life. Um, so it's not that I'm a, a weenie and I'm just used to box blind hunting because I don't do very much of that on my place. But yeah. in general, I just don't understand the getting from one side of the tree to the next. I mean, you know, and, and trying to draw and and I don't know. I, I know I just have to experience it to do it, but <laughs> I've watched the videos. I, I, think, and it's, I, I think it's, it's similar to any kind of style of hunting that you do, you know, Matt. It's one of those things. There are going to be people that are very proficient at it. And there's going to be people that really this is just a wrong combination, period. You yeah. know, don't do it. Oh, and, and that's one of the things, you know, you take the guys that are going to wrap in Wisconsin's a great example. You have hundreds of thousands of acres of public land, and it's all bluff country. I mean, straight up and down. And when guys are having success using this, you know, they're just zipping up the hill in the morning. They're saddle hunting below the ridge top right there. And, you know, when the deer is working that ridge top, you get silhouetted a lot because a lot of times you're almost on eye level with them. So being able to tuck behind that tree and do it. But, you know, you got to have coordination. You got to have, you know, some of us, as I'm 55 now. I like our, our hawk stands there, or muddy stands that have really comfortable seats. Maybe they're heavier for me to carry in, but I want to be in, in a chair, you know, and I understand what you're saying. So if you practice out of it and, and everything that, you know, Chris and I played around with it, you know, shooting out of it and so on and so forth, it, it takes some, you know, practice, but so does everything else. I can't wait to, to see how Tim does with it this fall and <laughs> show me how it works <laughs> what's gonna be even better is when i kill a buck if you remember when 
when Matt Foley on uh, on SNL came on Weekend Update and they hoisted him up as he's talking to Norm McDonald and he's flying, <laughs> that's what I'm going to do. I kill okay. a buck. I'm just going to oh, start. You're like, just going to start running the running man. <laughs> running, <I'm> like, <laughs> <laughs> yep, in the air, like a chunky Tinkerbell. Okay. <laughs> you run, run spritz around the tree, Tim. Yeah, just like, oh, well, I guess oh, that's oh, also oh, what oh. I don't understand. I get you know that you got to find the right tree to get the limp because you're still hanging off of. A certain limb, right? You're hanging off the trunk, so oh. your your heart, like like your safety line, goes around the trunk, and then you're just it's like being on belay if you're climbing. So so you can go that that's the flexibility. Mm-hmm. You can go all the way around the tree. Yeah, yeah. Okay, got it. Yeah. So you so that's your that's your pivot point essentially. And listen, I know we had said that we wanted the bad feedback. I don't want to hear an email. I don't want to get an email saying this guy's an idiot. <laughs> Look, I've never treated. I never saddle. Hunted. That's why we're having this show. It's because so there, sue are, me. There, are, there are other people that <laughs> I'm not cool. <laughs> that's okay. That's right. You've lived with it your whole life. Is that a joke or? Yes. Good. <laughs> okay, so we've hit saddle hunting probably to the nth degree. We'll doubt, uh, we'll, we'll, doubt, <laughs> doubt it. I mean, we didn't really do it justice here. I don't. <laughs> so, I'm gonna brush up on it now. After this. Away, like I know less than I did before I started that show. <laughs> hey, just supply us with some links of where we could send people to go get better information about saddle hunting. Yeah, if you go to hawkhunting.com, you'll be able to. Uh, Click on the saddle tab on the top and you'll see all of our products that are associated with that. You I won't have the know. platforms up immediately, but uh, the, the saddle itself will be on there. And, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong. It's my understanding that you have to wear a cowboy hat when you're hunting out of a saddle. <laughs> Keith does. Yep. Okay. I do. Backwards. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, what else is on your spectrum of of interest for uh, for different options for tree stands, blinds? You know, we're making some pretty pretty drastic improvements and and I um, upgrades to our current box blind line, which I feel like is really exciting. Uh, we're putting a new window system in that will be an inline change that is already is already starting. I was up where we were down in Texas this week at one of our box blind facilities down there, and we were looking at um, at the you know we're down at the manufacturing facility, so we actually got to see those those new windows in the blinds, and they were they were awesome. They were uh, they were pretty cool. So that that's one of the new upgrades that I'm really excited about. Tell us a little bit more about it, because doesn't it, it it gives you a little it makes it a little bit easier for the archery guy to shoot out of, and it's got a little bit better seal, right? So they've got their yeah, so they're they're one piece roto molded construction. Um, they got a better seal, so you're not going to have to worry about any any leaking windows as long as you, you know obviously seal your windows when you when you leave and you close them. Um, that's that's one thing I like about them. They've got an eave on the outside, so there's an eave that goes over the top that will prevent water from from coming down into those blinds. The Terry um, special, <laughs> yeah, and, and you know they're still one hand operable where they're spring loaded. So what I do when I get in that blind is I I open all the tabs besides one, and then that way it's just one hand. You can easily flip that. They're spring loaded. They're going to pop out about a quarter inch to half an inch, and then one hand to uh, raise it up silently. So that that blind's already, you know, it's already a, an awesome product. But it's just like anything, we're always looking for ways to make our products better. So I think that would probably be the biggest biggest um changes here with those box lines you made some changes to the door as well didn't you yeah we added extra we added more latches now so initially back in the day you know there was that there was that one latch and um it didn't feel bad but you know like talking to you guys and it made a lot of sense talking to terry and mark and everybody get the, get more latches on there you can tighten them as you as you wish um to get them to the appropriate tightness but uh yeah the that gasket has increased slightly in size um, around the inside of that door and then adding the extra latches should make a really good seal there. Nice. Interesting. You seem very concerned about windows. <laughs> well, yeah. 
I've had it window issues, Tim. <laughs> they you, were my issue. It you, wasn't the manufacturer's <laughs> issue. You know, but we're going to talk about Matt's issues on a different channel <laughs> later at night. <laughs> Matt needs a catharsis. <laughs> <laughs> you know, th- these things seem like small details, but in the moment they can completely make or break your hunt. Yeah. And that's where Mark and Terry, you know, they've, I think, you know, Chris and, and Keith would attest to this. They've helped so much over the years and perfecting window size and, you know, these seals and tr- their input anyways, just because they are, they're living it. I mean, I don't know yeah. how many deer we've spooked from a window popping when we, back when we were making our own blinds and, mm. you know, you know, just the amount of, you think it's airtight, but just the little bit of a crack you might have somewhere, whether it's the bottom of the door or the top of the door or whatever it might be, your scent being able to get out. So those guys, they live in these blinds now, basically. Mm-hmm. Sure. And, and, you know, they're getting up there in age. And like I said, it's changed the way we food plot architecture. It's just changed the way we hunt. And there's a safety factor. There's a factor of two people, two sets of scent, all the camera equipment we have these days, they prefer hunting out of them. So if they're going to do that, they, they're, they're going to want to perfect it and make sure that, you know, a six in Mark's case, a seven year old, 200 inch deer can walk five feet (laughs) from it and, you know, not have any issues. Mm -hmm. And, and it's amazing the success that they've had with it over the years. Yeah. Yeah. So right. it's cool. It's cool to hear you guys talk about how much attention to detail you're actually paying. Well, the thing, the thing that I truly love about GSM and they keep people in these positions, you know, we keep growing and, and acquiring different companies, but they're keeping people in these positions that know and understand things. And then you tie that together with our partners like Matt and, and, and you guys over there with the juries and so on and so forth and driven blah, blah, blah. We're taking input from the people that use the product. And we're actually implementing it. We're paying attention to that. You know, I, I specialize in ground blinds. You know, Chris comes over with the muddy line. You've got all these hard sided blinds. You've got hawk. You've got tree stands, stuff like that. And, and, and by keeping the right people in the right spot on the bus, you know, this bus is, is speeding up. But we can't do it without your input. And, and that goes for the consumer, too. You know, we answer thousands and thousands of emails a day. Some of them are, are great points. Some of them are, you know, okay, where do you come from? But that's all right. I probably ask the same kind of questions on other forums. But we're taking input from everybody, the consumer. We're taking input from our staff, who's very familiar. We hunt, okay? We, we hunt for a living at, at some point in the time. And we're, we're taking, you know, and, and putting all these people in place. So when we have these innovation meetings, we have discussions that make sense. So we, we can't thank you guys for giving us feedback and the consumer giving us feedback, but it's good to know that the right people are in the right spots. How do folks give you guys feedback? They just sh- go on the website and shoot you an email or how, how would the page, process? Most, most of the time it's drive by shooting. <laughs> that's all right that's they didn't I like, like this product <laughs> chris how do they give us feedback anything from facebook messages to emails a lot of it honestly i've heard a ton of feedback at the different trade shows we go to the hawk the hawk 20 inch helium stick that we just came out with is a prime example uh, we had a handful of people that uh, it was i think the ata show uh two years ago that were telling us, hey, man, we love your 30-inch sticks, but there's a lot of guys that are, you know, wishing that they were a 20-inch stick, similar in size and length to the uh, Muddy Pro stick. Mm. So um, we took that the, and realized that they made a good point with the points that they brought up with that and we brought that to market. And I'll tell you what, that thing is, it's awesome. It's an awesome product. And, and it shows that the consumer wanted that because they're selling like crazy. I've not got my hands on a set of the helium sticks yet, but I used uh, a, a different brand of uh, climbing sticks way back in the day. And I, I would always end up dog cussing these things because they sounded like someone clanging gongs together when you unnest them from each other. They were hollow and they just resonated with every movement. A nice <laughs> just, cold morning. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. <laughs> it just drove me nuts. And, and, and that's, you know, 
noise is a major <laughs> will, will definitely spook deer. And I always wondered just how many deer I didn't see because of the noise I made getting yeah, in. this day sucked. Oh, I wonder why. <laughs> because I suck. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, oh, the gong boy's back. Let's, <laughs> let's get let's out of steer here. steer clear of his 100-yard <laughs> radius. <laughs> yes. So we'll make sure uh, we'll make sure to link up some of the products that you guys mentioned. Is there anything else kind of on the horizon people need to be on the lookout for? What about the ground blind side? You know, I know last year was a big uh, leap in innovation for you guys. Um, anything to continue on the path of, of what, you know, with that see-through material, um, you know, and that, that was it the VS 360 or what, what was the name of that blind? I'm, I'm trying sure. to remember. It was that Infinity blind. What was it? Infinity. Yeah. Infinity blind. That's right. Yeah. He, he, he's just designed one of the coolest ground blinds I have seen, but we probably can't talk about it yet, but I am pumped yeah. up about that one. That's something I'm not lying. Like when people say, uh, oh yeah, there's this new product that's unlike anything you've ever seen. Most of the time it's not like that, but I promise you there's no, there's no other ground blind that is on the market like this. And I cannot wait for that to, to be released next that's year. That's going to be a 2021 deal. I'm assuming so. Is that right? Keith? Yeah, I would say, I would say spring of, of 21. Yeah, I had to we'll come get, that, we'll get like available in February and March. I look People forward to testing it this fall. Wink, wink. <laughs> <laughs> actually, I just got it. Keith actually has been testing it. He killed a big Tom in Wisconsin out of it. Yeah, it's, it, it's a really cool thought process that was clicking in my crazy brain that, that actually came to fruition and actually worked like I envisioned it. So it's very cool. We got, we went over the innovative products, the you know, innovation meeting that we just had, and we can't really talk about anything, but I can promise you there is new stuff coming out that will stop traffic. And it's, like I said, it's, it's not just, Hey, we got this really cool flavored cracker and we're going to flavor it differently. No, these are different products that rock. I mean, GSM is moving forward, innovative. We're, you know, we're not only the manufacturer, we're the sourcing agent, we're the distributor. We're kind of like that one-stop shop. And in order to keep growing and keep doing it, you got to have people like Chris and I that hunt and we do this stuff all the time. I'll make sure Ben's aware of that. You need more time to hunt. (laughs) That that was the whole reason I said that, by the way. I mean, I think this this innovation comes from a hunt. (laughs) Yeah. I, I think if, Chris and I could just latch onto you guys and maybe do 20, 30 hunts a year. And, and, uh, what will we go with that? Is that okay, Chris? I think that makes sense. Yeah. I'll let Mark know. <laughs> yeah. If you want to do 20, 30 hunts with Matt or I, that's like a three or four year span. That's going to take to get into those. <laughs> and numbers. they're going to be real crappy hunts. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> like, you're going to be really, I, bring the saddle. Cause you're going to want to kick back. <laughs> hey guys, speaking of innovation, just throwing this out there. If, if you want to do this, a blind that looks like a rusted out old car. Got it. <laughs> or tractor. Yeah. The tractor is probably the key Just in, in all seriousness. If you could park something out there, Brooks and I talked about that forever. We, we tra- thought about building a blind that was black, looked like a tire on a tractor. So you could just back it up against a tractor. <laughs> nice. nice. <laughs> you know, the urban unit, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so. All cool. right. Well, why don't we help out our buddy Ryan Stoner from Ohio who has this week's question of the day. All right. The question of the day is probably brought to you by lacrosse footwear, makers of our favorite boot, the Alpha Burley Pro. They've been doing it right since 1897. Hey, guys. This is Ryan from uh, Ohio. Uh, I've got <laughs> high hunt Eastern Ohio, and I've got a set of woods that <laughs> is up on top of a hill. And I don't have great access to it. There's a logging road that goes through the center. And then it kind of peters out. Well, I've got mature bucks. I've hunted it for three years now. I've got the movement down pretty good, but the mature bucks seem to be staying further back in the woods. So I've been doing some scouting here for March. So uh, I noticed I've got some good spots clear back in the back, but I'm trying to figure out the best way to get to them. How do you get to them? And it's all woods around me. So I've got to walk through the woods somehow. So I'm thinking walking on the one property line as far as I can and sweeping in that way. I was just trying to get maybe your guys' thoughts and opinions on maybe making a better route in there or what have you or what you guys might do. Thanks. 
I'm waiting for I, someone to end with this. Just saying, love you. I'm sorry to Ryan ahead of time. I, I just got a kick out of when you said petered out. <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> it's like, it's not you. It's me. <laughs> we're not good people. We no, I've usually never make, fun, make fun of the people that take the time to ask us questions. I, no, that's what I was thinking. Like, this is not really good form here but if you'd like to be roasted on air us, you'd understand it because everybody gets made fun of <laughs> yeah yeah it really means you're part of the club and if That's you want right. to be part of the club go to juryoutdoors.com slash podcast click the send voicemail button leave us a voicemail we'll make fun of you a little bit but we'll also answer your question That's on right. the show i thought it was a great question i mean it really was but petered out and yeah, comprehensive yeah. it did peter out a little bit <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so all right guys so what do you think beamer what do you think on this I'm defaulting it to Chris because he's probably naked on the other side. And that just goes hand in hand with this question. <laughs> okay, let's see. <laughs> Is Chris naked? I am so confused by your response to that question. <laughs> Are you really? I mean, you've worked with Keith for a while now. No, nothing surprises me with Keith ever. <laughs> no, I, I think it's a good question. I think that uh, that's what everyone faces in some, in some way, shape, or form based on the property you're hunting. Access is huge. Some farms are way easier to hunt than others. Some farms have much easier access than others. And um, some people are, you know, more fortunate to have a lot, a lot more land where maybe they don't have to press in as hard on, you know, I I don't know how many acres um, he has to hunt, but they don't have to press in as hard on that. I feel like if you're in that situation, I just took a few notes down. Um, I think if you're in that situation though, where you've got a big block of timber and that's where the deer are at and you're, you can't, maybe you can, maybe you can look at ways to try to bring them out. Mm-hmm. That's not really what he asked. He asked about hunting, you know, down in that timber. Um, I, I remember watching Bill Winky a lot back in the day and um, they talked about access all the time and Bill's farm kind of, he's got a big timber farm um, down in Southern Iowa, not far from me. And one of the things that he would always talk about was he, he would use ditches to access his stands that were way down there deep in the timber. He would also um, he would park on the road and walk that gravel road to where that ditch came in. And it maybe maybe the stand was way on the other side, but he had to access it through that ditch. So he'd go out there in the summer. He would trim that ditch out down that bottom and, and walk that ditch with the, with the chainsaw, get it all cleared out, and he would use the ditch for access walk those ditches and get as close as he could to that stand, pop out of the ditch and, and be in his tree. If you don't have that, if you, if you don't have, you know, that ability, um, I would think in a morning, if you got there early enough based on where those deer are feeding, if those deer are feeding and there's certain ag fields around, if you can get back there in the timber before those deer come back <laughs> to bed, um, that's what I would look at doing. Another quick note I took down was, and he's probably tried this, um, and it's you know easier said than done. But can you gain access from a neighboring farm to get back there? That's and, a good point. And, and I don't know how the layout is, but um, maybe you know it's a lot easier to get permission to walk across the property to get to where you're hunting. And you know, there's some guys who are like, well. I hunt here or I don't allow hunting, but I'll let you walk across mine to get back there. So just a few quick notes that, that I wrote down quick on that. You you know, one of the things, and and I, I ground blind hunt, so I'm not an expert at tree stand hunting whatsoever, but we use smoke emitters and it's like a fireman's smoke bomb. So to speak. And it's, it's always good to, go to where you think you want to set up in the summer on a cool morning or whatever, and just light one for a little bit. And, you know, it's not a puff bottle, a puff bottle, you lose sight of it after 15, 20 feet, learn what thermals do. And, and that's the key. What I had on my farm when we hunted and we hunted out of blinds, but we hunted it on those hillsides and we hunted, you know, over draws and whatever, like, like Chris was talking about, like this gentleman asked, and I'm doing it out of a ground blind. But being able to cast that smoke and watch it in the morning, watch it in the evening, go out there on a hot, you know, midday, go out there on an evening that's cooling down and just light one of these and just watch what that does. You know, it's exactly like a river. And with it being that, you know, that's where the currents go. 
you know, in the shallow areas, it's going faster. And these deep draws, there might even be just calm eddies that just sit and swirl. And that's what will get you busted too when, when you're deer hunting is if your farm is producing a lot of these calm eddies or that the just sits there and spins real easy, you run the risk of it. You want that, that thermal to run that, you know, you want it to go on that smoke uh, down and away from you. Can you guys even see me there when I was talking? Yeah, yeah. I think uh, great points for from both you guys, and I think you know, you know, Chris brought up the access side of it. I know Mark and Terry talk about it all the time that if if they don't feel like they have, you know, say they were looking at a piece to lease or potentially buy or whatever. And, and, and they first thing to look at is like, all right, North winds, Northwest winds, how am I going to access this thing? And if it doesn't look like it's doable, Mm -hmm. you know, a lot of times that might change their opinion on the piece of property altogether. That's how strict they are about their access in. Yeah. Um, I really like Chris's point about the ditches because I, I, have this kind of similar situation happening and I've never really thought about in that, that light because when the rut comes, you know, we always try to tip into our timber, you know, and my best spot on, on the lease, it just, you got to walk like a hundred yards in the timber yeah. and you feel like you're busting everything out of there. The best thing to do is either go super early and you still can bust something out of there or, you know, that, that idea about following a drainage ditch mm-hmm. as close as you could get, and pop up. that could be an option for me. That's one I'm going to think about going into this year yep. because, you know, we cross it going in, but then we kind of sit, we take the shelf, you know, and take it all the way into the tree. Yeah. Well, maybe I could take a different path there. That's a great point. Yeah. Use the train. The only, I, I agree with everything you guys have said. The only other thing I would add is that it, it, cause some of the places I hunt, there's just no way around it. I mean, you can walk the draw up and then pop up onto a ridge or something, but if you can walk slow, because people walk from point A to B, we walk with purpose. You can tell when a person's walking through the woods, squirrels, whatever they're like a pinball bouncing around and they take their time. Same thing with turkeys. So if you can, can walk a little bit, pause, then you, I, and I like to I like to pause by a tree, so I'm not just a human yeah. form out there. You can actually be pretty close, and a deer can hear you. I think, and if if you're walking slowly, pausing, and then walking again, I think they're less likely to to bump. So it's just another way of getting in. One more thing, if you you know say you're going in early, early in the morning, and <clears throat> you know obviously you're trying to have minimal uh, footprint there. Mm -hmm. You know, you could do that path ahead of time, make sure it's cleared out, but do that path ahead of time and use your, you know, your waypoints on, on X and help yourself go through there and get there, you know, so you don't get lost in them. You know, I'm talking like 4 a.m., 5 a.m., you know, definitely, especially if it's the dark of the moon or whatever. So Mm -hmm. uh, just another tip, you know, it's a good way to add your path in ahead of time. We've done that on the lease. And then, you know, if somebody else is coming in to hunt, Wayno comes in to hunt or whatever, I just share it with him and and he's got it and and you don't have to worry about it. Sure. You mean like Chris and Keith joining you guys, like the 30 or 20 hunts that we got Ben to sign off on? That's right. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think Something that's like in the that. contract. I thought it? it was we were coming to, uh, to hunt with you, but okay, whatever. Sure. We'll get Ben's credit card. <laughs> <laughs> it's so another, fact, I think another thing on those high risk setups is to wait until the odds are as much in your favor as possible. I mean, I Good know point. we all want to hunt as much as we can yeah. and you can't kill one from the couch, but I feel like he was talking about. He knows way back in that timber, that's the best spot. I would wait for the best absolute time to go in there. It's a high risk move, especially if you, if you can't use some of what we discussed. It, it's, it, it's, it, it could be a very high risk. So wait until the time's right when that deer is going to be moving more than he ever is in daylight. And um, just throw caution to the wind and get in there and hunt, I guess, when, when you have the best chance. It'd be nice but if people I, had I, an I, app I, that would tell them when they when could go. go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I think what Chris just said is a great example of, of waiting because if you watch weather trends and you watch winds and, and people forget about that in the morning when you're, you're climbing in there, you know, and there might be a Northwest wind coming of three or four miles an hour, but if it's 60 or 40 degrees in the morning and it's warming up to 50, chances are that your thermals are going to go uphill. You know, that heat rises that, you know, you think about it from an elk hunting standpoint, you know, we all want to get up to the black timber, but when we do that, you know, we run that risk of of people busting us. So our our animals busting us. So you, you you wait for that right moment, you wait for the right weather and you wait for things to work in your favor. Mm -hmm. Well, speaking of the right moment, we're going to see if this 10 year old 
Under specialty, fresh earth scent still has the funk to it. Let's do it. Matt what, has. What do I do here? You pop it open. Ah. Oh, <laughs> yeah, it still it still smells like woods <laughs> or a shed that's not been. Oh. <laughs> you, you would not win at uh, table hockey. Or would I? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> and so that was, that's the smell that I associate with deer hunting because that's what I, I would spray. I would, I would not only attach those to me, but I would also <laughs> use the Hunter Specialties fresh earth spray i would associate that smell with like a shed an abandoned shed that looks really creepy Mm -hmm. and sling blade lives in yeah Yeah. like stinks like hell (laughs) (laughs) after a while i was like i smell like a dirt clod (laughs) yeah i mean it's definitely leaves and dirt that's what i smell out of that thing The, the cool thing was and let me grab it here when you open it up, it still has the the uh, diaper pin, or the safety pin. That, that that's the cool thing about it. Well, one of the cool things. <laughs> this is just like this is. Oh, I guess they all had diaper. Wow. They Have you opened pens. it? <laughs> no, I mean it's it's ten years old. I just saw it and I was like, I'm gonna I'm gonna bring it in. Yeah. So it's there it's, you go. It's natural state. HS scratch and sniff episode number one. Do you guys still have those? Does that do you guys still have that wafer line? Yes, we got a full line of wafers. Everything that will help you and benefit in elk hunting to deer hunting to all different kinds of things. And as Tim just showed, <laughs> that's ten years old and it, it's still holding its shazam. So, Ooh. you know, think about cover sense, think about attractants, but they're there. You know, H. S. Struts got them. Nice. Yeah. Don't pin the doe and estrus one on you. Uh, no. Just saying. All right. All right. Well, let's shut this thing down. We'll hit the wildlife think- word. Next week. Yeah, yeah. I think we've had enough fun for today. (laughs) We went off the rail, on the rail, off the rail, mostly off the rail. I'm going to blame Chris, and I'm going to blame Keith, and I'm going to blame Tim. Let's do it. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Thanks, everyone, for watching. Keith and Chris, thanks for hopping on. All right. Till next time. Peace out. We're adding new videos every week, so make sure to click that subscribe button and check out all of our amazing content. This episode of DOD TV was brought to you by Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's.